Stone Hill, I think. Hold on tight. Oh, oh. No longer on the bus lane. Okay, guys, the brakes on. Oh. Oh. Are you okay? Wow. Oh. I think so. James Watt and Martin Dickey are uh, back. I can feel that. To collaborate with the best brewers in the world Whoa. and brew a beer in the dumbest way possible. Whoa. Basically, it's the same shit they've always done. It's not bad. This is the Brewdog Show. I know what you're thinking. Where are James and Martin this time? They just watched the show open. They know where we are. Ah, OK. As you know, we're in the south of France, one of the most beautiful areas on the entire planet. Famous for champagne, famous for wine, and famous for cognac. But up until now, not that famous for craft beer. But we're on our way to meet Aurelian from La de Bouche, who's on a mission to change all that. And we are going to lend a hand. Why are you walking about with a baguette? France. I thought you were just in a bad mood. Founded in 2013 by husband and wife team Eglantine and Aurelian, Brasserie La Deboche has enjoyed nearly instant fame with their signature dark oak-aged Anglo-Saxon style beers. With labels designed by illustrators, tattoo artists, and comic authors, mixed with their strong crowdfunding roots, it's no wonder they owe their meteoric rise to success to being a brewery of the people. Hello, I'm James. Martin, hi. Hi, Martin. Nice to meet you. Hi, Martin. Hi. Why did you just kiss him? That's what you do in France. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. 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 You have to kiss me too. Let's have a few beers first. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> so tell us a little about beer here. And we started to brew like five years ago in a small place. And we've been very lucky that our beers were like satisfying people. And we've decided to open a tap room. Then people can have some beers that are not usually so much uh, sold around here. Craft beer is not such a big thing around Angoulême. We are very close from Bordeaux. So a lot of people are drinking wine, also cognac. So you guys are the pioneers of craft beer in this part of France? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, we are. As a husband and wife team. Yeah. Yes. We'd love to continue speaking about the beer scene here and your business, but we'd also love to taste some beer. Have you been good? Are you Santa Claus? I'm Santa Beer Claus. It's my favorite type of Santa. <laughs> this is a sour with passion fruit. Cheers. Cheers, Santé. Cheers. You have to say it in French. Santé. Santé. Delicious. You like it? Yeah. yeah. You get passion fruit, so it always has that tartness about it. It's super, super sour as well, so it's an explosion of fruit in your mouth. This is going to make me healthier, I think. Yeah, it's five fruit and vegetables a day. I don't know if you have that in Scotland. In Scotland, we only have two vegetables. Uh, we have potato and carrots. Like well, if you have two pints, you'll be fine. I'm just going to have five of these, and then yeah. I'm all set for the week. <laughs> and what were you guys doing before you set up De Bausch? I was a uh, blacksmith. I was a teacher. I was a normal person then. <laughs> and now, not normal no, no, anymore. No, not, not anymore. Not at all. I mean, it sounds a lot like the story that myself and Martin had. So we both had day jobs. We were super passionate about beer. So we quit our jobs and set out on a mission to make beers that we loved, in which was essentially a desert area for, for craft beer. And that's exactly what you guys have done yeah. here. And I think it's really important that you make the most of all the assets that are around your doorstep. You know, you guys are in the cognac region, so you have all these amazing barrels that have been used. Yeah. Uh, you know, in Scotland, we have all these amazing barrels that have been used in, in whiskey. So it's, you know, it's really important to kind of get the terroir of the region into the beer. Yeah. You'd like to try the cognac barrel beer? How do I say absolutely, all day long, definitely yes in French? Uh, totalement, toute la journée, oui. Definitely, toute la journée, oui. Yeah, you could be French, really. Could I? No. <laughs> Just give me a few beers, then it'll be, it'll yeah, be okay. Yeah, you'll make this. This would make you French. So it's 9.5 ABV. Whoa, you're hitting us with the big yeah. guns now. Yeah. <laughs> and Aurelian, will you do the tasting notes in French for us? Mais je dirais qu'au nez, on a énormément, on a déjà le caramel, on a déjà un peu de houblon, et on a déjà quelques notes de cognac. Toute la palette ar aromatique du cognac commence à se dégager vraiment, même dès, dès le départ au nez. Et après en bouche, t'as tout de suite les fruits secs, les fruits compotés, le bois qui est là et la bière qui est tenue à la fin par l'amertume qui est vraiment prononcé, qui vient tenir la bière tout au long de la dégustation, comme ça, là. Je ne comprends pas le mot. C'était super intéressant. Donc, nous devons faire une bière qui représente cette partie magnifique de la planète. Qu'est-ce que nous devons faire Tour de France. Une bière de cycling. Ce qui serait drôle, c'est d'être une bière que vous pourriez boire pendant que vous marchez. Ça serait bien. Ça serait parfait. C'est une meilleure idée. 
Okay, so we're trying to design a beer that you can enjoy while cycling, but we've got to somehow get cognac into this beer. Yeah, but we need to, to have a small ABV. David will need to work out a way to get all four of us onto a bike. Four of us? Yeah. Four. Like yeah. even myself? Yes. Yeah. No, I'm not doing it. This is too stupid. It's too stupid? Yeah. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah, the two of you, okay? I don't want to bike. I hate that. Could you maybe be the cycling coach then? I no, can be, can but be you need to know, I'm a terrible coach. Terrible coach is better than no coach. Yeah, maybe. But maybe. you need to know that before. I think you can motivate us. I will do what I can, definitely. Okay, so we're going to go and see David, we're going to go and see the cognac distillery, and we'll speak to you guys soon. Okay. Okay. Thanks for the beer. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Sophie. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you soon. Go. Bye. Bye. I was going to give you the kiss. Doesn't matter. But you kissed him and you know me for years. With its open plains, gently rolling hills, and rugged mountain ranges, France is known as one of the best cycling destinations in the world. And since 1903, it's been home to the Tour de France. Back then, it was common for competitors to drink alcohol while cycling to dull the pain. Sounds awesome. But that practice was sadly banned in the 1960s when the governing body of the Tour classified alcohol as a stimulant. Narcs. So, being in no shape for a grand tour, and encouraged by beer as a stimulant, James and Martin are meeting David in a bike shop to devise a way to brew while cycling. Do you ever think David's ridden a bike? Yeah, I think he was in one of the original photographs uh, riding a penny farthing. Wow. David. Gentlemen. Bonjour. Bonjour. Mwah. Mwah. Again, with the kiss of good. If there's anything the French love more than wine, cheese, and going on strike, it's cycling. And David, we want to have a Tour de France-inspired brew system. Brilliant. Something that will go faster than Lance Armstrong in his drugged-up heyday. Oh, now that would be a challenge. But OK, you have the power, you have the physical power to manipulate the wheels. Look at these thighs. Yes, brilliant. Do you want to okay. touch them? No. So we'll start in cognac. Yep. I will cycle us after we've mashed into Chateau Neuf, where we will sparge, where we will boil. Martin's then going to take over in the uphill stretch, mm -hmm. take us all the way to Angolum, where we can pitch the yeast and then go for some beers. Perfect. David, you actually look like you've been using some performance enhancing products in that beard of yours. I'll show you what he uses. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's <laughs> called energizing oil. <laughs> well, you wouldn't mind if I put some on, would you? Yeah, what does it smell like? Cedar wood. It actually is quite fragrant. You might need to put some on Martin's thighs for tomorrow as well. Oh, it's quite refreshing. You look very energized. Where else would you use this on your old, tired body? In various old, tired parts. David, you've got a load of work to do yep. to get this brew system built. Yep. James and I have also got loads to do. We need to go and drink some cognac. Excellent. Good luck. See you. I'll see you soon, Dave. Goodbye. Thank you. Godspeed. Across town, James and Martin arrive at the Velodrome de la Santoge to get the two-wheeled tutelage they'll need to compete as beer-making athletes at the highest possible level. Like that's even a thing. Cycling is my second favorite form of transport after piggybacks. Most people like to drink beer after cycling. But today we're going to drink beer whilst cycling. We're here to meet one of France's most intimidating cycling coaches so he can tell us what we already know. But it's not a great idea. It might be one of our worst ideas. Yeah, it's not. It's not in the top five. I'm not even good at cycling. This is Sebastian Guillemet, a 20-time decathlon finalist, which of course is a sporting event having nothing to do with cycling, but hey, this is who we could book for the shoot, so there you go, a rare, honest look at TV production. Still, Sebastian is a fitness expert, and as the vice champion of Europe on the 400-meter dash, we think he's more than enough athlete for James and Martin. Hey, I'm James. Sebastian. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Oh, it's friendly. So, we're going to be doing some cycling here today with some beer. Will drinking beer make us faster on the bike? No, the, uh, drinking water is better. I think how it works is if you drink a 5% beer, it makes you go 5% faster. No. <laughs> let's, let's see, we're Scottish. No, uh, you can cycle with uh, only water, yeah. the second uh, lap with beer, and the third lap with cognac. Every time getting progressively faster? Um, no. How can I get around here really fast? Begin slowly, get in inside. I think it's about time that we started racing, find out what is the fastest, water, beer, or cognac. Okay. 
gentlemen, start your engines. Three, two, one, go. And we're off. How do you do this? <gasps> Don't go too fast until I get the boot on. It's, oh, the boots are on. Okay, go. I'm going to drop down. I think I'm actually winning. I'm not sure what's happening. Oh, Marty just went past me quite easily. <laughs> I think I need to change gear. How do you change gear? Oh, blow my chains off. It was supposed to be me against James, but I think it's going to be me against beer, cognac, and water. Victory is mine. Yes. Oh, oh. 57102. Water is for losers. About to go down, powered by beer. <laughs> I'm ready to race. Ready. Martin actually drank a whole bottle of 11% Baltic Porter before we go head to head in a bicycle. There's no messing with science. You either do it properly or not at all. Are we ready? Ready. Yeah. Two, one, go. And we're off. And this time, we're powered by beer. Oh, I've got a deep burden in my thighs. It's burning. Go faster, go home. I'm not sure if the beer is making me faster or slower, but it's definitely making me happier. Oh, it's in my eye. Ah, oh, I can't see out of my right eye. 46 and 50 is better. Wow, so we're yeah, much too. faster with beer. Beer has taken us to a whole new level of cycling. Look at the speed he was going. It was just blowing straight into his face by the looks of it. Does anyone want to lick my face? Yes, if I can try that. Do you want to lick it? Adds a salty complexion into that beer. <laughs> okay. We've done beer and we went faster, which logically means if we do cognac, we're going to go even faster. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh, I think you snapped something. I think it was my hamstring. <laughs> These booties are a nightmare, thank you. So now, racing with cognac. I've actually got the edge on Martin here. Oh, I'm a little bit sick of my mouth. I am cognac, I am sweat, I'm endurance. Come on, James. Oh, this isn't going well. Oh, that cognac is too intense. 102, 117. Mm. Well, I was hydrating and then I was almost sick. Oh. So then I thought I may as well just have a snack. I got cognac in my eyes. Nice. Nice cognac. Nice cognac. So I think the conclusion is water is okay, beer surprisingly good, cognac maybe not for cycling. Thanks so much for teaching us how to cycle and I'll look in my face and I'll hopefully see you soon. Yes, with pleasure. Take care. Thanks Sebastian. Thanks. Why do you, you keep kissing everyone here? That's what they do in France. Is it? I love it. While the boys have scientifically proven that cognac is the least performance enhancing alcohol, oh. they still have its sweet taste on their lips and they're determined to merge it with their beer. So in order to get the best, they're heading east to Maison Bernot, one of France's most elite cognac distillers. Scotland is a lot like France. We both love fighting with the English in spirits aged in oak. We're here at Maison Bernot to taste the king of all the brandies, cognac. And find a way to get that amazing cognac flavor into our beer without the huge alcohol kick. Any ideas? Yeah, I could drink it and then I could use my body to de-alcoholize it. I don't love that idea. Maison Bernot, or House Bernot, has been the largest family-owned estate and distiller in France since 1640. Covering miles of vineyards and home to 41 Alembic pot stills, Maison Bernot blends the finest eau de vie from Grand Champagne to create a rare and authentic cognac style. James and Martin are here to see Remy, a 24th generation Bernot, who joined the family business to manage the distillery in 2011. After having spent time in the wine business in California and Australia, he brings fresh air to the very traditional cognac industry. This place looks amazing. Thank you, yeah, we are in uh, our Grand Champagne vineyards and we're gonna finish our harvest today. Today? Yes, just maybe five rows more. So can James and I help with the harvest? Yeah, I think it's the best way to understand what is cognac. Okay, do you have some scissors? No, no, we have some big toys there, and I'm sure you will good driver. Do you get to let us drive these? I'm sure you can do it. It's very easy. You want to have a race? Yes. You're not only going to let us drive them, you're going to let us have a race. That's amazing. What does the winner get? Uh, maybe a bottle of my favorite cognac. Sounds perfect. Let's do this. Good luck, Martin. Good luck, Vineyard. Good luck, Big Machine. Let's go, guys. Okay, which one's faster? This one. Okay. This one? Yeah, that, that one, James. <laughs> <laughs> 
taught us how to do this. This looks very complicated. Where's the air conditioning and where's the sound system? Okay, Martin. Three, two, one, go! Oh, oh he's away. I don't know what's happened to Martin, he seems to be lagging behind me a little bit. Whoa! This is super tricky. Good to get the machine perfectly over the grapevines whilst collecting the grapes and not crashing. I can't believe they're letting us do this. This is us racing over vines that are more than 150 years old. Generations of Remy's family's work is quite likely going to be ripped apart by very poor driving James or myself. Hopefully James, I don't want to wreck the guy's minds. Oh, 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 this is more difficult than it looks. We're catching back up. Now, oh. Martin's got ahead of me, how did he manage that? Come on, I can see him, he looks, he looks terrified. I've got no idea how to drive this thing, it's shaking about from side to side. I've broken him mentally. These things are just so big and so unstable, you can't turn them too quickly. Well, you can, but you probably end up on your side. We're on the way back now, and somehow, I think at the turn, I managed to get my nose just a little bit ahead of Martin's nose. Smile, you son of a I can hear his engine. Oh, <laughs> Martin, what have you got? Shake and bake, baby. Let's give like a photo finish. Come on, come on, go faster. Oh no, it's super tight. Come on, come on, come on! I think I maybe just got him here. Go, go, go! Tight. I don't know who won. I think it was close. Hopefully I helped with the harvest as well. I kind of lost, lost sight of that. That was so much fun. Who won? It was very close, guy. It was a very good race. You lose. Ah, oh. right. good job. Well done. Great you got job. lucky this time. I did. It was very close. But you're a very good driver. Thank you. Now we can have a taste of uh, our ex Rus. So it's a blend with Grand Champagne and Petit Champagne, the two best crew of uh, the region. And how long have your family been making cognac here? We can trace back our family since 1640 in this area. Wow. Quite a so long almost time. Almost 400 years you've been making cognac in this area. Yes. You look so young. So <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> And what a fantastic place to drink this cognac in the vineyard where it all starts. Exactly. It's such a beautiful flavour. You get hints of, of grape, a little bit of acidity in there, but so much more like honey, mm -hmm. it's like nuttiness, and then you've got the vanilla smoothness of the barrel in there. I bring something very good for you from my great grandfather. He distilled this in 1910, so that's... In 1910? 1910. 110 years old? Yes, almost, yeah. They didn't have any machine like this. The, all the process was different but the liquid is just perfect, so. If you was to sell a bottle at auction or something, how much would it sell for? Probably 25,000 euros, something like that, for one bottle. So we're about to have more than a thousand euros worth of cognac for in six, our glass. Yes. Wow. Thank you. And the only very old thing that I can compare this to, so my grandmother's 95, and this smells much better than she does. <laughs> the mouthfeel on that is incredible. Incredible. You can feel this power inside. I don't know, it's unbelievable for me. It's just always a good pleasure. And the flavors are just intoxicating. So kind of complex, nuttiness, you're getting some oakiness, just kind of hints of smoke popping in there. So much fruit with a kind of floral spiciness to, to finish it off. And every time you go back, there's just more nuance and flavor to get lost in and encapsulated by it. So it's phenomenal. The thing that amazes me the most is what this liquid has been through. It's 110 <laughs> years, it's lived and breathed and sat sleeping for pretty much all of it, but it's been there. So all the good things that have happened in the world, all the bad things that have happened in the world, this spirit has been there through it all. He was sleeping for so long and now we just give it life to them just to enjoy it. Can't thank you enough for, for sharing this experience with us. It's my pleasure. My mouth is full of history. <laughs> Obviously, we can't use this one in the beer. And the XO tastes fantastic, but might be a bit too high in alcohol. Anyway, we can get cognac flavors into the beer without quite so much alcohol. So this is a extra old Pinot. I think it will be good for your beers. It's uh, about 17, 18% alcohol. So a little bit lower and very sweet. So, so Remy, this is a blend of brand new brandy spirit off the stills, plus the 
pressed grape juice that you use fresh, to make the brandy. Yeah, fresh grape juice and we directly add new eau de vie on it. So when the two are mixed together, it's just grape juice colour and mm -hmm. then you put it in oak barrels for how long? This one is 15 years old. 15 years? Yes. I think the fact that this encaptures everything you do here from start to finish, from the aged cognac to the fresh grapes that we've just harvested, and the flavours would go phenomenally well. And the beer that we're going to make, we should definitely use this one. Remy, as the winner of the Harvest Challenge, I think you promised a prize? Yes. I think you probably win this small sample of 1910 cognacs. Wow. If you, if you like it. Of course he likes it. <laughs> and I think it would only be fitting if you shared it with uh, the person that you narrowly beat and maybe the person whose great grandfather made it. Mm, I'll probably just keep it. <laughs> okay, we'll finish this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cheers. Cheers. Aside from La Debouche, here are James and Martin's top five breweries in France. In the eastern suburbs of Paris is our number five brewery, Brasserie Outland. It's the brainchild of former gypsy brewer, Jan Geoffroy, who learned his trade in California and brought American beer culture back to France. With hoppy pale ales, West Coast style IPAs, and Americanized beer names, this brewery may be America's best chance at getting the French to actually like them. Alsace is the largest beer producing region in France, turning out French and German style lagers. But some breweries there were born to be rebels, which puts Brasserie Saint Cru on our list at number four. Using homemade fermenters and American and Belgian inspiration, Saint Cru creates beers with bold personality and a fistful of hoppy taste. Coming in at number three is the Piggy Brewing Company. Born in 2010 by brewers looking to create beer that was out of the ordinary, they've succeeded with exceptional white ales, pale ales, and stouts. They brew under the character traits of a pig, jovial, wise, and good humor, which are also traits we hope to take on while drinking beer so we can all be in hog heaven. Coming in at number two, La Brasserie de Montsalève is near some of the purest water in France, which explains the crisp taste of their mountain spring beers. Add to that their unfiltered, unpasteurized philosophy, and the only thing altered in your drinking experience here may be your desire to ever leave. Arnaud Popin and Gunther Ultra are the genius craft brewers at our number one spot, Brasserie Popin in Valmort, France. Founded in 2017, this young brewery is already producing some of the most sought-after beers in Europe. Their beers combine fruity aromas with strong bitterness, they more than doubled their production in 2018, and there seems to be no end in sight. It's Brew Day, and the boys are starting on their 50K Grand Tour de Beer in Cognac, where they'll meet up with David and mash in on their new state-of-the-art brew cycling system. From there, they'll ride 30 kilometers east to chateauneuf sous chiron where they'll sparge and transfer the wort and add the Pinot. Then it's another 20 kilometers to the finish line in Angoulême, where they'll pitch the yeast and cheers to an easy ride where absolutely nothing will possibly have gone wrong. To keep them on course and well hydrated, they'll be mentored by Aurelien from La Deboche, who convinced them earlier in the show that he's a great coach. I'm a terrible coach. Ah, it'll be fine. David! This looks perfect. We have a mobile brew system. Mash done, pre-fitted with our pillow block gimbal system here. All you have to do is mount this to our rotating gimbal system here. Pedal away. Okay, but there's a slight problem. There's going to be almost boiling liquids yes. in here. Yes. There's going to be someone sitting here. We're going to be bouncing about. How do we avoid that person getting burned with all the liquids? Well, I would suggest that the rider just rides smoothly. So I'm going to cycle some, Martin's going to cycle some, yes. and you're going to coach us along the way. Yeah, right. I will have a coach's car. So Martin, you're probably a slightly better cyclist than I am, so I might take the first leg, and then you can take all the hills at the end. I'll take the glory as we finish. Yeah, you will. I'm a massive fan of the Tour de France. I always watch it on TV, and I always think the same thing. What would make this better, and what would make it better is making beer whilst on the journey. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, David. OK. Ciao. Let's mash in, Ciao. and let's get this thing going. What's the malt bill for this beer? Pilsner, pale ale, and a little bit of caramel. Oh yeah, a bit of caramel. But it's a small recipe, not a lot of malt, because we will use the pinot. Let's do this. Perfect. I will take the saddle. You got any hits? Oh. 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 It hasn't started too well. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good job I wasn't in the bike, to be honest. Perfect. OK, I think we're good to go. If you can take the safety blocks off, go to the coach's yeah. car, and we'll hit the road. Martin, adopt the safety position. I've got the safety gloves. Good, OK. Awesome. See you soon. OK, James, let's go. On your marks, get set, go. Oh, this is really smooth. Oh, shit. 
<laughs> How was that? You okay? I think, I think I might have broken a vertebrae. As long as the beer's okay, I think we're in good shape. It's fine. How far is it? Hopefully not too far. Come on, Carl! Just 50 kilometers left. Did he say 50 kilometers? If you want some beer, guys, let me know. Faster for beer, James. Okay. Maybe closer. <laughs> Perfect. This is really tough. Just cycling is difficult, but I've got you and a mash ton behind me as well. I don't think I've had enough beer for this. Bonjour. Bonjour. Oh, <laughs> the, the mash ton's going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> What's the mash ton? Why is it doing that? Whoa. Be careful with the beer. I think it's going to be great. It's going to be mixed up nicely the whole way there. Since instead of having a little agitator on the bottom, we've got James with some strong legs taking us to Chateauneuf. What side of the road do you drive on here? Well, not this side, because there's a car coming. It's not the good side of the road. I get confused if from yeah. Scotland. You can't say on this side, but you're going to die. I'm going to die? And we don't want die. to see you die today. Not in France. You are so slow right now. I want this beer in Angoulême tonight. I'm going as fast as I can. I can give you some music right now. I would love some music. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, these vineyards are beautiful. It's amazing. Never it's mind the views. Worry about pushing 400 watts. <laughs> I'm worried about pushing one James watt. I'm going to give James some sustenance. Can you reach my hand? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Thank you. I'm feeling it now. Woo. I'm whoa, fueled. It's filling. <laughs> Very fast. <laughs> How are you doing? Too much speed. Slow down. Ah! The fast and the furious. Oh, no, no, no. It's crazy. While beer proves itself once again to be an excellent performance enhancer for cycling, the ultimate performance enhancer for cars remains fuel. Stop the car. The car's broken down. Oh, no. Our cycling coach is out of action. So while Aurelian stays behind to fire his driver, James and Martin are left to the harrowing task of finishing their long journey without a guide. Pretty much like everything else they've ever done. Oh wait, nope, there's Aurelian. Quicker, faster, ah! guys! <laughs> what the hell are you doing, man? Oh, he's helping. Oh, yeah. I, uh, oh, now, now we're kicking on gas. This is the way to go up the hill. Lance Armstrong's my favorite, so today, to pay tribute to my sport and hero, I'm doped up to the max. And missing a testicle. Just jump, jump on and do a hill. Ah! Oh, mother! <laughs> <laughs> We're finally pulling into Chateau Neuf. Oh my goodness! Almost there. Keep going. I think it's somewhere here that we should uh, should do this fire jump. <laughs> you guys okay back there? I'm being down. <laughs> oh. oh, here we are. I think it's maybe time for you guys to do some work now as well. Brilliant, let's take this thing apart. This one. Perfect. How are we looking, Martin? Very good. Okay. Very much there. Okay, All right, I'm going to cut this off and let's cut it off there as well. So that is the sparge completed. Yeah. And do you know that Angoulême is a fortified city? And that's just like a normal city, but they add a little bit of cognac to it. Important part now, get this burner on and get the boil. It's not great for fingers if you like them. <laughs> Whoa! Slightly high, if anything. <laughs> I'm standing by, Martin. Try that again. I think these cycling tops are quite flammable as well. I thought you were going to explode the city centre just now. I was a bit worried. What hops are we going to use in this beer? For the bitterness, it's Columbus. Columbus? Yeah. And for the aroma? Aroma, it's citra, falconer's flight, and mosaic. Awesome. So some old school and some new school yeah. hops in there. Oh. <laughs> I fixed it. You did that. <laughs> what happened? OK, let's try that again. You sure you don't want to light it? No, not one. I want to burn myself. No. Oh. Ball flame. That's burning like crazy. We're going to be boiling in no time. Oh! I fixed it again. Okay. Fine. Right, let's get these hops in before we blow the whole thing to pieces. Okay. No, I never come close again to this scene. And when I said we wanted to blow up the beer seed here, this is not quite what I had in mind. Good job with the hops. <laughs> this is almost too much excitement for one day. Oh. 
<laughs> so the boil's almost finished. I'm gonna add these final hops. And for the first time ever, I'm gonna add the hops with a fire extinguisher in my hand. Oh, the citron mosaic smells so good. Good luck, hops. It's really exciting for us to be able to infuse cognac, the spirit, the flavor, the culture of it into this beer. Yeah, if you come in front and in this area, you have to do something with cognac. Yeah, so the Pinot, is there more quick taste? Mm. One more. Maybe more, more. Just to make sure it's okay to put the bits. Mm. It's amazing. Martin, you're getting all the energy you can get. You should take an extra shot. You're right. I'm just going to be sitting in the back, annoying you. We should put some in the beer. Yeah. It's fine. We should keep, hold on. <laughs> I think we need a little bit more in the beer. Stand back, watch your toes. Oh, this is hot. <clears throat> this is hot. Smelling is really good, though. You're instantly getting these amazing fruit flavors from the citra and the mosaic hops intermingling with the cognac notes, with yeah. the fresh grape juice in there. That pinot is incredible. You can smell. Yeah, you can smell. What do you smell as a pinot? Ah. We always love to taste the wort as well. See if we can do this without burning anyone. In case to be careful, this is very hot. Thank you. Should be good? Yeah, it's about right. This is the culmination of our work today so far. I think this is going to make a fantastic beer. It's going to be low alcohol, yeah. 3%. The citra and mosaic are popping up, but then there's the little note of the grapes as well. The pinot yeah. coming through, a little bit of the alcohol at the moment, you know, that's probably going to the dissipate of, a little bit. Taste of the cognac and the, the pinot with a low ABV. You really get a taste of the terroir of cognac. Yeah, it's the most strange brew day in all my life. <laughs> and it's only halfway done. <laughs> Let's get back in this bike. Cheers. I don't think there's a massive rush to get back on the bike, is there? I think there maybe is. Everyone holding on? I'm holding on tight. I'm okay. Oh! oh. Ah. That's fine. The final stretch. We're going, Martin. You're doing a good job. The work's cooling down nicely back here. We're keeping a good eye on it. Your bum looks really good in those cycling shorts. Oh, thank you. Woohoo! <laughs> It's getting a little bit steeper. You can do this. I believe in you. I don't believe in me. I'm struggling to breathe. Bonjour. Bonjour. Oh, we're getting behind him. Slipstream, slipstream. He's gone. You're actually doing quite a good job, Martin. The work's not swinging about too much, and I'm doing the very important task of stabilizing it with my foot. Make sure you hold on carefully. 10 kilometers to angle him. Thank goodness. I need some assistance, guys. Oh. Thanks, Aurelian. Awesome. Feel the burn. Get in the zone. Visualize success. Think about how many people's going to love this beer. Come on. Come on. You've got this. So we're going to get you in the Tour de France next year. On that hill. I want to stop. Why would someone choose this road? I feel a bit like we're a bobsleigh team. <laughs> These hills are savage. You're telling me. Martin, I think it's all downhill from here. I hope so. Okay, guys. Jump back on. Okay. Thanks for your help. Oh. Uh oh oh. Only eight kilometers left and heading downhill. Things are looking sunny for this booze infused Grand Tour, except for that dark cloud and all the falling water. Oh my goodness, this weather is going from bad oh, to this is wet. worse. But we are so close right now. We keep the worst part of the road for the end. So wet. Uh, <laughs> this weather is not much fun for that. Right, it's downhill, I think. Hold Martin, on tight. Bus lane. Okay. Oh, oh. No longer on the bus lane. Okay, guys, the brakes on. Whoa. Are you okay? Wow. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Martin, what just happened? <laughs> it's quite slippy. We could fix this. I'm not sure if we can fix Martin. And the bottle. Oh, that's fine. The bottle's fine. Yeah. D did you get injured? I don't know. Do you feel qualified to be behind the wheel or do you want someone to take over? I think we're all over this. We well, just have to go carefully. I think you're all over the pavement. Seems to be okay. Feel free to jump on. It's very safe. We're almost there. Right, guys, the finish we're line. The finish line. Hey. It's enough cycling forever. Well done. What a day. Yeah, what a day. Much tougher than the actual Tour de France as well. Maybe. The work feels pretty cool now. I think we could probably yeah. pitch the east. As our host for today and our guide to France, we'd love you to pitch the east. 
Perfect. I think it's definitely time for a beer, then maybe another beer, yeah. then another beer. And then because this is a race, someone has to do the urine sample. Simple. This has, I think, been one of the hardest brew challenges we've ever had. We've cycled almost 60 kilometers from Cognac to Angoulême. There was huge hills, there was weather to contend with, there was yeah. some fantastic coaching, there was mechanical breakdowns, yeah. a small accident at the end, but we're all yeah. here. We almost yeah. blew up a town square. That happened. <laughs> Maybe you should do that again tomorrow? Okay. Yeah. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Here are James and Martin's top five beer bars in France. Coming in at number five is Le Zitho. With 18 taps and a shop with 100 bottles of quality beer from around the world, it's the largest beer selection in Bordeaux. And that's not all. Add a delicious tapas style menu and regular courses for those wanting to know more about the craft beer scene, and Le Zitho may be the closest bar to heaven the world may ever know. Unless you're looking to buy a jump rope, it's impossible to be disappointed by our number four bar, Hop Store. Founded in 2017 in the historical district of La Martiniere in Lyon, Hop Store offers a wide selection of regional, French, and international beers. They have 24 rotating taps, 120 bottles, and pub food made from local ingredients. Hoppy Corner, our number three bar, is located in the Sentier district of Paris. Often referred to as Silicon Sentier, this is the country's tech hub of startups. Pouring artisan brews since 2016 and looking like a rock and roll startup itself, Hoppy Corner serves a vibrant young local crowd. Our number two bar is in the heart of Bordeaux, Jacques and Craft Beer. With seven taps and nearly 400 bottles, JCB has been flying the craft beer flag in France since 2014. Licensed as the area's first shop and drink store, most of the bottles are in coolers, so you can enjoy them on site while nibbling off plates of charcuterie and raising a defiant finger to the people across the street, drinking wine instead of beer like you. At La Fina Mousse, you'll find 20 craft taps and over 150 meticulously curated bottles with a focus on some of the rarest beers in the world. It's the ideal place for beer lovers with regular tastings, events, and workshops. Their obsession with making every customer number one is why they're number one with us as well. James and Martin are in the southwest of France to create the ultimate cognac-inspired beer. After a rest and some bandages from the longest and stupidest beer run in history, they're back at La Deboche to share their beer with the people who probably won't understand what they're saying anyway. Bonjour. Ça va? Do you guys like wine? Yeah. Do you guys like cognac? Yeah. Do you guys like beer? Yeah. We've been so excited to be in the southwest of France this week, and we've been so excited to hang out with an amazing team at La Debouche who makes some phenomenal beers here. So thank you guys. We wanted to make the ultimate South of France beer. And France is famous for only one thing. It's called the Tour de France in Scotland. I don't know how you call it here, the, the Tour of Us. <laughs> so we wanted to make this beer in a bicycle race. So James and myself did the only thing that we should do. We went to a velodrome to practice. <laughs> we did some laps fueled not just by beer, but with cognac. Oh, it's in my eye. Ah, I can't see out of my right eye. Not so good. <laughs> oh, I was a little bit sick in my mouth. What we gathered from that experiment that categorically and scientifically proven because the guy had a stopwatch <laughs> is that beer will help your performance in at least short course cycling. <laughs> we wanted to infuse the heritage of cognac into this beer. So we hooked up with a team at Maison Boineau and we infused this beer with a Pinot, which is a cognac cut with fresh grape juice and then aged for 15 years. This beer was made whilst we were cycling between cognac and Angoulême. And we had the beer system hooked up to the back of a bike. Martin and myself took turns to cycle. The other person sitting in the back holding on for dear life. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. But also, on three occasions, we almost blew up our entire brew system in the center of Chateau Neuf. <laughs> After Chateau Neuf, we were on a mission to get to Angoulême to pitch the yeast. We got very, very close to the finish line, and then something devastating happened. We crashed. Oh, wow! Oh, oh. Thankfully, the beer was fine. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to taste it? Yes! So, do you have the beer? Yes! What I'm going to do is let you guys see how we like to taste our beers in Scotland. 
Bonjour. Ça va? Taste? Mmm. 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 On the front of your palate, you're going to get that malt sweetness. You're going to get that date must, that pinot, that cognac. As it goes back, you're going to get a little bit of that acidity, a little bit of the hot bite. You're going to get an explosion of fruitiness just to finish it off at the back of your palate. And this beer is not just perfect for drinking tonight, but this beer is perfect for cyclists the world over. <laughs> this 3% beer by alcohol will actually improve your performance by 3%. <laughs> and not just in cycling. <laughs> Soccer, maybe. Oh, I, I thought you meant the other thing. <laughs> Thank you so much for helping us brew this beer. What do you think of it? It's amazing because you clearly feel the, the Pinot. And still, it's really drinkable, refreshing, and I guess you can win a race oh, with yeah. this kind of beer. Really fresh. Actually, we could drink it I think all day long. <laughs> I have been drinking it all day long. <laughs> the beer is nice, but the sugar is a bit too much for me. It's a beer for everyone, beer lovers or amateurs. And are you a beer lover or are you an amateur? I'm a beer lover. I've noticed a slight problem. Um, you don't seem to have any shoes. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's okay, we can fix that. Ah, oh, so nice. Am I supposed what? to put them? Yes, put it? otherwise your feet are going to get cold. <laughs> I also have acquired some new shoes. <laughs> Whoa, these are, these are hardcore. Yeah. Yeah, you're right old. <laughs> I'm gonna sell these on eBay. You can keep those ones. No, no, it's very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and did you know about Aurelian's newfound passion for cycling? I did not, but I'm really looking forward to the shaved legs. And the shaved chest. Once you start, you just yeah. work your way all the way up. This is gonna change my life, definitely. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna change mine too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Would you drink this beer whilst you were cycling? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to be more strong. What type of physical activity do you think this beer is perfect for? I, I do Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Do tai Chi. Yeah. So what sports do you like to do? Uh, I like tennis. But mostly I run. I do uh, box. boxing. Boxing? Porridge and beer is the best fuel for running and maybe cycling as well. So in the morning before you run, you have porridge and beer? No, I have beer the night before. So have this beer and do some boxing? Maybe. We'll do it like this. <laughs> it's fine. Not bad, not bad. <laughs> We need a name for this beer. What should we call it? The Bicycle Crash. The Bicycle Crash. How would we say that en français? Un accident de vélo. Un accident de vélo. That's the perfect name for this beer. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Dante. Dante. Cheers. Cheers. I'm going to need them back. <laughs> We love this beer. We put our heart and soul into making a beer that we felt was a fitting tribute to everything that we love about this part of France. If you like it, put up your glass in the count of three and we'll all shout Santé. If you don't like it, just stand there like that. <laughs> and then go <laughs> home. <laughs> Un, deux, trois. Santé! I'll take that as a wee. <laughs> thanks so much for hanging out tonight. Thanks so much for tasting the beer. Thanks so much for supporting what the amazing team are doing here at La Debouche, which is absolutely phenomenal. Good night and God bless France. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Bonne journée. Bonne journée. <laughs>